Follow the path of Dusty's Trail, oh Dusty's Trail, Dusty's Trail. A stage and a wagon are heading west, part of a wagon train lost from the rest. Dusty's the reason for their plight, thanks to Dusty, nothing's right. Only the wagon master's hand keeps them a rolling to the promised land. All oh, the going gets mighty rough, but they don't seem to mind. It's California, A, that's the place they must find. Deserts and rocks are in their way, but they won't stop, come what may. Mountains and hills that they must scale, but they know they'll make it cause they just can't fail on Dusty's Trail. Is your wagon master around? He's out watering the horses. Well, uh, we'll wait for him. Oh, that, uh, that really smells good. Doesn't look too bad, compared to what we get in the Army. Sure would be nice to sink our teeth into some real grub for a change. Help yourselves. I tell you, the potatoes aren't done yet. <laughs> Callahan, will you old buffalo? Oh, Ryan, what the? But they're still letting you wear those stripes, aren't they? Cookie, <laughs> you didn't tell me here that your wagon master was an old yellow leg. Huh? Yeah, yellow leg. It's a cavalryman. It's got a kind of the yellow stripe they wear down their bridges. Uh, Ryan here and I used to be in the same company together. <laughs> Callahan, this is me corporal here. Sprouls, I want you to meet the best ex-sergeant that ever wore cross sabers. Now, you're as full as Blarney as ever, aren't you? Hey, what are you two doing way out here? We're looking for an army deserter. I tailed it out of the army with the payroll. Ooh -hoo. Have you noticed anyone suspicious around, flashing a lot of gold? Oh, no. Dusty, you seen any strangers? Yeah. Oh, who? Them. <laughs> hey, Dusty, how you coming with dinner? That's him. He's a deserter. He's a deserter. I tell you, that's Webb Matthews, the sidewinder we've been looking for. Well, somebody please tell me what's going on here. He's a member of our wagon train. Well, that cinches it. We heard he joined up with a wagon train. He's the one we're looking for, all right. Ain't he, Orion? Mm-hmm. Sure. Yes, this is the varmint, all right. Yeah, I'd know him anywhere. I was the courier carrying that payroll, 6,000 in gold, and he ambushed me. My head still aches from where he whacked me. Well, maybe the whack in your head got you all whacked up. I tell you, I'm certain. Well, somebody please tell me what's going on. These men think you're somebody called Webb Matthews, that you're an army deserter, and you stole some payroll gold. <laughs> That's ridiculous. No. Well, I've been with this wagon train for the past four months. That robbery took place five months ago. Callahan, did you know anything about this man before he joined up with you? Well, I certainly... And you? You got any proof at all that you're not Webb Matthews? Well, of course I... And do you have any proof at all that you didn't hightail it out of the army? With the company payroll? No, but that doesn't mean anything. All right, Corporal. Let's take him back to the camp. Now, wait a minute, Orion. Callahan. Now, you know better than to interfere with the army. This whole thing's absurd. I'm not going anywhere. Hold it. It's all right, Andy. Better go peaceable. It's all right. We know you're innocent. Well, all right, Mr. Callahan, if you say so. All right, let's go. Hey, take it easy on him, Orion. Get this thing straightened out. I 
no, it's all a misunderstanding. Yeah, they got the wrong guy. Take it from me. I know men. Well, Ryan's always been as honest as they come. That's what I can't figure out. Anybody want to eat? <laughs> me either. What do you think about this dreadful situation, Carter, dear? It's quite elementary, really. Andy's innocent. How can you be so certain? Why would anyone want to steal a paltry six thousand dollars? What are you going to do about Andy? Well, nothing we can do tonight. Sleep on it, decide in the morning. If we can sleep. Mm. Mr. Callahan, hmm? I'm really worried about Andy. So am I. I don't understand. Something about Sprouse and Orion that just doesn't ring true. Yeah. No. Come on, let's get some sleep. Think about it in the morning. Be What's going on here? We're sure Andy didn't do what those soldiers said. We don't know how yet, but we're going to help him, aren't we, Carter? Amicus non desertus Brookhavenus. <laughs> a Brookhaven never deserts a friend. Family mob. <laughs> and we're not leaving Andy behind either. Well, of course we're not leaving Andy behind. This wagon train is not going anywhere without him. No wagon master's worth his salt and don't look after his own. Besides, I got an idea how we can get to the bottom of this whole thing. Mr. Callahan, I could kiss you. Uh, thanks, but right now I need Dusty. <laughs> I ain't gonna kiss you. <laughs> you would have saved these old army uniforms for something. Where'd you get all that stuff? From the cavalry. Yeah. We'll take the stripes off of those things. It'll be all right. We're gonna put these on and go into that camp. You know that, that look that Sprouls and Orion gave to each other? Something funny about that. Yeah. And we're doing it for Andy. That's right. I can smell an honest man a mile away. Yeah. Here, here. Well, I can smell his cavalry. <laughs> <laughs> here, here. Now remember, all you got to do is just blend in with all those soldiers. Okay, see? okay. And never volunteer for anything. Okay. And keep your mouth shut. I'll do all the talk. Did you hear that? You keep your mouth shut, and I'll do all the talking, all right? How can I talk with my mouth shut? <laughs> Come on. Hey, you! Us? Where are you two going? Uh, well, uh, I'll tell you. We was gonna go down there and have a swim. You got a pass? No. You? He's doing the talking. Huh? Yeah, well, he can't talk, so he's got a, a sore throat. Well, suppose the both of you just go back in camp, and I'll uh, forget you were sneaking out. Uh, all right. <laughs> well, so far, so good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't salute anybody unless they got some gold on their shoulders. Hi, buddy. <laughs> hey. hey, look. Boy, I bet he didn't mix the dinner first. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, Andy. What's up? Yeah. What are you doing here in those uniforms? We come to get you out of here. We know you're innocent. Mr. Callahan can smell you a mile away. <laughs> you know, if you're telling the truth, then Sprouse is lying. Don't you worry about a thing, Andy. We're going to find all the facts. <laughs> Too loud. I appreciate what you're doing, but you're taking your life in your hands. Also a mustache. <laughs> What's happening? Uh, oh, uh, we were just having a look around, sir. Well, talking to prisoners isn't allowed. Don't you have other duties? No, sir. We don't volunteer for anything. Oh, I'm volunteering you for that drill squad over there. Get moving. Yes, sir. Go, go. That's me. Here, here, you two hits, not to it. Now, you two fall in with the rest of them recruits. Now, let's look alive in here now, squad. All right. Squad. And spin. Left. 
that wagon train guy and Webb and me will be off the hook. I don't like it. I just don't like it. You don't have to like it, Orion. You just go along with it and you'll get your share of the gold. Enough to pay off your gambling debts. Either that or a bullet in your gut. Take your pick. That Orion never could play poker. And as soon as I identify that guy at the trial, I'm off to join Webb. We'll split up the loot and send you what's coming to you. Hey, the three of them are in this thing together. Uh, it was a sorry day when I met the likes of you. We all have our price, Orion. All I did was meet yours. Hey, come on, we gotta go save Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you people, I'm worried. Now, Callahan and Dusty should have been back by now. I hope nothing's happened to them. I'll go. So will I. No, 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 no. It's, it's my place. I won't hear tell of it. Besides, it is a man's job. No offense, Mr. Brookhaven, but I really think Lulu and I could do a better job. A bet? What do you mean? Well, you see, there are things that we could accomplish with soldiers that you can't. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, of course. That, that is a possibility I hadn't thought of. Mm. So what can they do? We're not in the Army anyway. So they'll make us civilians. Listen, we are charged with spying and impersonating soldiers, Dusty. We're on big trouble. Hey! Okay! Let's break it up, huh? your business, please. Oh, well, you see, our wagon train was passing through the territory, and we heard there was a little old army encampment nearby. <laughs> Are you what they call a major or a colonel? Well, uh, no. <laughs> Not exactly. M my job's more important. <laughs> oh, Betsy, did you hear that? That's so exciting. What do you do? I keep those outside from coming in and those inside from going out. That does sound important. <laughs> but why would anyone want to leave a delightful place like this? I've got three prisoners like to give it a try. <laughs> prisoners? Yep. We can court martial. General Cunningham's coming tomorrow to preside over the trial. <gasps> that sounds so thrilling. What do you suppose is going to happen to him? What do you think happens to spies and deserters. Oh, my. We'd give anything if we could see a 
real live prisoner. Anything? <laughs> See what I can do. <laughs> this here Cunningham's coming in tomorrow to run the whole shebang. You're wrong, Lulu. But that's what the sentry said. He's coming today. Now here's what I want you to do. your commanding officer that General Cunningham has arrived to preside over the court-martial. Oh, uh, uh, my uh, stagecoach broke down uh, two miles down the road, and uh, my men are repairing it. But the General wasn't expected until tomorrow. Tomorrow what? Tomorrow, tomorrow sir? <laughs> sir what? Sir General Cunningham, sir? That's better. I'm recommending you for corporal. Now hurry up and announce me to your commanding officer. I have to get back to the war. What war is that, sir? Sentry, there is always a war going on somewhere. Yes, sir. Right this way, sir. Seats right down front. <laughs> Kane, good. General Cunningham, sir. How good to see you. Oh, uh, have you met me before? Oh, I know, sir. Oh, then, this is indeed a pleasure, sir. <laughs> May I introduce my wife, Mrs. Sir General Cunningham, <laughs> and my two lovely daughters. Miss Lulu Bell Cunningham and Miss Betsy Bell Cunningham. How charming. Ladies, will you be seated? <laughs> we can begin the trial, sir. Where's my gavel? Right here, sir. Plain oak. I'm accustomed to mahogany. <laughs> oh, well, I suppose you have to make do out here in the wilderness. I hope this never gets back to the point. <laughs> well, who is the trial counsel here? Uh, I am, sir. <laughs> I am, sir. You are? You're kind of young. You sure you know your law? I studied at Yale, sir. Yale? <laughs> It's not exactly Harvard, is it? But I suppose some of us have to struggle through life with some sort of a handicap. All right, Lieutenant, you may call your first uh, witness. The court calls Corporal Sprouls. Can you identify the man who attacked you and stole the Army payroll? Yes, sir. It was Webb Matthews. Is he present? And if so, can you point him out? That's him. I object! Uh, sir, you can't object. You're the presiding officer. A mere technicality. Are you familiar with the case of Lucas versus White? No, sir. Yeah, well, the objection is sustained. Are you going to get back to your law books? Yes, sir. <laughs> the court now calls Sergeant O'Ryan as a witness. Uh, yes, sir. Sergeant, will you tell the court what the other two prisoners were doing when you apprehended them? Yes, sir. Well, you see, they were, they were in uniform, pretending to be soldiers. And they were, uh, they were spying on this here military outpost. Orion, you're a disgrace to that uniform. I, I object. Your objection is completely out of line, Lieutenant. Are you familiar with the case of Wayne versus Garrett? Yes, sir. You are? <laughs> uh, well, there's this other case of um, Duval versus Lovelace. That reverses Wayne versus Garrett. No, sir. The Tyson-Danbury decision reversed Wayne versus Garrett. <laughs> Correct. Uh, I'm just putting you to the test, and you passed for once. <laughs> Sir, I don't believe I need more testimony. And I'm prepared to deliver my summation. Good. 
Well, uh, I hope it's a brief one. In the immortal words of Chief Justice John Marshall, a uh, brief summation is a good summation. Never, in all the annals of military history, have any more dastardly crimes been committed by a soldier and his two cohorts. To assault a poor, defenseless, enlisted man in the act of doing his duty. To steal the hard-earned wages of our self-sacrificing, brave, fighting men. To dress up in an honorable uniform for the dishonorable purpose of ferreting out military secrets and delivering them to the enemies of the United States of America, the home of the free and the land of the brave. This, sir, is nothing short of treason. They're guilty, the whole treason of all of us. <laughs> Well done, Lieutenant. I, I was carried away with your eloquence. So, uh, now uh, we must hear from the uh, defense side. Who is the defense counsel here? I will speak with the three of us, sir. Uh, I agree with everything the lieutenant says about that robbery. The only trouble is he's got the wrong man. Now, Dusty and I here was dressed up like that because we was trying to find out the real truth. Uh, I rest my case. <laughs> I have now heard both sides of the case, and wishing to be completely unbiased, unprejudiced, and impartial, and with the facts on one side completely outweighing the lies on the other, so I declare these three men innocent. <laughs> General Cunningham, sir. General Cunningham. No, sir. What do you have to say for yourself? Uh, you're a day early. <laughs> Wait a minute, General. Uh, Andy here is not Webb Matthews, you see. Of course he isn't Webb Matthews. Webb Matthews was captured three days ago with the payroll bowl. They made a full confession. I'm here bringing you the news. Oh, well, then you're going to want Sprouse and Orion. <laughs> Dusty, we get that on there in a minute now. That's it. Turn it. Turn it. Ladies, men, we will bivouac here for the night. March out at 0500. Okay, Mr. Brookhaven. Mr. Brookhaven, what? Mr. Brookhaven, Sir General. Mr. Brookhaven, what are you talking about? We're not in the army anymore. I know. But Mrs. Brookhaven finds me so much more exciting <laughs> this way in a uniform than I thought I'd be surprised. 